Bridging Mathematics Trigonometry. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, Engineer Guzman. Uh, I am co-presenting this subject with uh, Engineer Angloan. So for this particular video, for this video, we're now starting with trigonometry. We're going to discuss now uh, types of triangles and the solution of right uh, triangles. Okay, so for this video, our learning outcomes will be the following. So we need to introduce the different types of triangles and we need to use the, the trigonomic functions uh, trigonometric functions and the Pythagorean theorem to solve uh, right triangles. So those are our main goals for this uh, lecture. Now, uh, trigonometry okay, is thought to have had, is thought to have had its origin in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. The ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, and Greeks developed trigonometry to find the lengths of the sides of triangles and the measures of their angles. Okay. It was Hipparchus, the father of trigonometry, a Greek mathematician who introduced trigonometry as gleaned from ancient tablets uh, and tables which reflected work on the ratios of trigonometry. Uh, trigonometry, which means triangle measurement, deals with triangles. Okay? So it treats of the measurement of the parts of a triangle and the properties and relations concerning the behavior of the trigonometric functions. Because of the various developments in science and mathematics, uh, modern trigonometry adopts the functions approach. Trigonometric functions descri uh, describe many natural phenomena and are therefore important in the study of optics, heat, uh, electronics, x-ray, acoustics, seismology, and many more. These functions are similarly important in the, in the study of higher mathematics courses. Uh, varied practical applications of trigonometry are found in astronomy, engineering, which is for our particular profession, navigation, survey, and other related sciences. A thorough knowledge of trigonometry is essential in solving problems arising in mensuration, measurements, in designing roads, bridges, machines, and houses, and in determining lengths and distances, especially those which are not directly measurable. So in our particular profession, trigonometry is one of the foundations that you need to learn. So if you're taking bridging mathematics, it is considered that you came from a non-STEM uh, course for senior high school. So this bridging math is really important so that you can now catch up with the other STEM students. Okay. So think of this course as your pre-calculus course. So one of the main topics for this course is now trigonometry. Okay. So we cannot really discuss trigonometry without defining what an angle is. Okay. So an angle is formed by rotating a ray around its end point. The initial position of the ray is the initial side. So this is the ray of the angle. While the location of the ray at the end of its rotation is the terminal side of the angle. The end point of the rotated ray is the vertex of the angle. Here, we shall use the words rotation and angle interchangeably. So an angle, when we are forming an angle, we are, we are rotating a terminal side from the initial side. Okay, That's why rotation and angle will be interchangeable by definition. An angle may be named by referring to its vertex wherever it is clearly indicated by using three letters representing one point from each of the two sides of the angle and the vertex and by using a number placed in the interior of the angle. So for example, the adjoining angle here can be referred to as angle A, that is the vertex, first definition, angle BAC, so BAC, angle CAB, okay, so using the three letters from the rays and then the vertex, or angle 1. So if there is a, uh, there are varied notation for angles, so these are the possible notations that you can use. Angles may also be referred by, uh, to by using Greek letters like alpha, beta, and gamma, or theta. Okay, so some references uh, call angles uh, in a different name or use different, uh, let's say, nomenclature when naming their angles. So these are the common ways in which we can name your angles. Okay, so the degree measure is indicated by a tiny circle placed on the upper right corner of the number. So here you see degree, okay, a tiny circle placed on the upper right corner of the number. The size of uh, angles is indicated or indicates the amount of rotating the terminal side from the initial side. Okay, so the size of an angle indicates the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. A horizontal line is sometimes called the real line. 
Okay? The line is divided into two equal rays by a point called the origin denoted as zero. Okay? So if you notice, this is somewhat your Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system. Okay? The right ray of the horizontal line is usually the start of measuring angle. So we usually start the measure of the angle or the rotation of the angles from the okay, right ray here or from the horizontal x-axis positive. Okay? Or the x-axis positive. Okay? So angles between zero to 90 degrees, okay, here. So here are our quadrants, or here are our axes. So on each of the axes, we have a different angle specified. So here on the positive x axis, we have zero degrees. Positive y, we have 90 degrees. And then negative x, we have 180 degrees. And then negative y, we have 270 degrees, okay? If the angle falls between, okay, zero to 90 degrees, somewhere here, if the rotation stops here, okay, it is said to be in the first quadrant, quadrant one. If the angle falls between 90 to 180, it is on the second quadrant. If it falls between 180 to 270, it's located in the third quadrant. And lastly, if it lands now on, okay, from 270 to 360, it now falls on the fourth quadrant. If you, if you go further, let's say 360 to 450, then you go back to your original rotating point. So that angle is also on the first quadrant. But usually our rotation only considers until 360 degrees for simplicity purposes, okay? Now, an angle is uh, considered positive if rotation is counterclockwise. So if you go here from the A, from the initial side, go up, rotate counterclockwise, you call that a positive angle, okay? It's negative if it goes clockwise, okay? So these are the sign conventions that we need to follow when we are solving now for angles. A rotation is measured with reference to a circle in terms of degrees, okay? So a complete rotation of a ray gives an angle whose measure is 360 degrees. So one complete rotation from the initial side here, from the first or the uh, right ray here, one complete rotation gives you 360 degrees, okay? So one degree, therefore, is one of 360 divisions of that rotation, okay? The degree has finer subdivisions, the minutes and the seconds. To represent degree, minute, and seconds, we use the symbols degree, okay, minute, and then second. So this can be found in your calculator later on when you're going to convert uh, decimal degrees to this type of system. So this is called the sexagesimal system, when it uses degrees, minutes, and seconds. We usually use this exclusively for angles, okay? So a subscript where 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes and 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So it follows the notations of time. But instead of hour, we have a degree. So degree, minute, and second. So with these equivalences, we can convert measures of angles in degrees to measures involving minutes and seconds and vice versa. Okay? Now we have different types of angles. Okay? So we have here just seven. Uh, angles can be defined in many different ways. Okay? So we're just going to exclusively define them for now by their measures. Now, if you have an, an acute angle, that angle is now between 0 to 90 degrees. A right angle is an angle measuring exactly 90 degrees. Obtuse angles are angles between 90 to 180. Straight angles, an angle measuring exactly 180 degrees. A reflex angle is an angle between 180 to 360. Angles are complementary if their sum is 90 degrees, and angles are supplementary if their sum are, or if their sum is 180 degrees degrees okay okay so now that we have already discussed angles let's go to triangles so a triangle is the figure formed by three non-collinear points and the three line segments that join them the points are the vertices of the triangle and the line segments are the sides of the triangle so in general we name a triangle by referring it to its vertices which are represented by uppercase letters say triangle a b c by convention, each side of the triangle is named by using the corresponding lowercase letter that represents the vertex opposite it as shown in the figure. Okay? So if this particular vertex, if this particular juncture of the segments is labeled A, its opposite side, okay? So this is now a vertex, okay? Its opposite side, the side opposite to this, the line segment opposite to this, now specifically line segment BC can now be classified as the lower case of this letter. So this becomes capital A, the vertex, or the angle. Its side opposite to it becomes now small letter A. 
Okay? The naming is completely arbitrary, so you can name any three letters for the vertices of your triangle. It just so happens that the most common uh, names are A, B, C. Okay? Now, we have different types of triangles. Triangles are generally classified as scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. A scalene triangle or scalene triangle has, two, uh, has no two sides congruent. A scalene triangle has no equal sides or no equal angles. So if you look at here, this is an example of a scalene triangle. Okay, we have six. Uh, we have three angles. We have three sides. None of them are equal. That's how you identify a scalene or a scalene tri triangle. An isosceles triangle has now two sides equal and two equal angles. So this is an example of an isosceles triangle. Okay. Notice that this angle here, angle A, is 75. Angle B is also 75. The opposite of angle A, obviously, now is uh, side A. Side A is 260, and then side B is 260. These two angles and sides are equal to each other. Therefore, we can call this now an isosceles triangle. Okay? The other side, or the other angle, is not. But if all of them, okay, if all of the sides and all of the angles are equal, we can now call that an equilateral triangle. So the three equal sides and three equal angles of 60 degrees each. So all of the angles, therefore all of the sides are equal. Okay. So notice the angles of these different triangles. And you'll see something that is common for all of them. Now, uh, triangles may be further classified as acute, obtuse, or right. A triangle is said to be acute. So, uh, recalling the acute angle, if all of its angles are acute. So, if all of the angles of the triangle are less than 90 degrees, you call that triangle an acute triangle. Okay, so this is one acute triangle. No angle is greater than 90 degrees. This one is close, 89, but it's not 90. So, it's still considered as an acute triangle. It is obtuse, so a triangle is obtuse if it contains one obtuse angle. So, an obtuse angle is greater than... 90 degrees. So therefore here, an obtuse angle is 102. A right triangle is a right tri is a triangle with one right angle. So a right angle is 90 degrees, correct? So here is one right triangle. So here are our focus for trigonometry. We need to learn how to solve right triangles and we need to learn how to solve acute and obtuse triangles. Okay? So don't worry, we're going to discuss that for trigonometry. So a right triangle, so we'll expand on this later, okay, has a 90 degree angle, just one, okay. The uh, side opposite to that right angle, say let's say here, A is 90 degrees, is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. Each of the perpendicular sides of a right triangle is called the leg of the triangle. So the longest side of a right triangle, the right triangle is the hypotenuse, and then the remaining two sides, okay, will be the legs. Now. Notice all of the different triangles here. If we add all of their angles, all of the internal angles of the triangles, notice that all of them has a sum of 90, uh, 180 degrees. So that's a special property of triangles. The sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees regardless of the type. So even if you have a scalene, isosceles, or equilateral triangle, the sum of all of these angles will now be 180 degrees degree so that's a special property of your triangles okay so those are your types of triangles and with that i can now proceed to the solution of right triangles so right triangles as i mentioned a while ago has an angle of 90 degrees or has a right angle a right triangle okay is a triangle in which one angle is a right angle so here we have a right triangle the relation between the sides and the angles of right triangle is the basis for trigonometry Okay, so basis for trigonometry, meaning this is a foundational concept that you need to understand and learn. The side opposite, the right angle, so let's say here for this particular right triangle, uh, usually a right triangle is denoted by a, a square on the right angle itself. Okay, so if there's a square here or a perpendicular symbol here on a particular angle, that means that angle is 90 degrees, therefore making this triangle a right triangle. Okay. So the side opposite the right angle, this one, is always the hypotenuse, okay? It's always the longest side of the right triangle. The sides adjacent, okay, uh, to the right angle are called legs. So the adjacent sides 
are now your B, and now your A, they are now called your legs. Okay? Side A here may be identified as the side adjacent to angle B. Okay? Where is angle B? So angle B is here. So I've told you a while ago that we name we usually name triangles or angles in different ways. You can name them using three letters. So angle B can be named angle A, B, C. Okay? Or simply angle B. Okay? It says here that side A is identified as the side adjacent to angle B. When you say adjacent, okay, there are two adjacent sides to angle B. However, one of them is the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is not really defined as a side. Okay, it's defined in itself as the hypotenuse. So when you are picking sides between adjacent or when you are defining an adjacent and opposite side, you're only choosing between the two legs. Okay, so here, if I want to identify the adjacent, katabe, okay, angle uh, side of angle B that is now side A. Okay, and uh, as the side adjacent to angle B and opposed to or opposite to angle A. Meaning, side A is adjacent okay, to angle B. So, think about adjacent as close. It's close to angle B, but it is opposite. Okay, Opposite side, it's facing now angle A. So, a while ago, I've mentioned how we name angles and sides, correct? So, if this is the angle, let's say angle A, its opposite side, okay, readily or obviously, will now be side A. Same letter, but just the lower case. Okay, so for angle or for side B, therefore, side B is now the adjacent side of A, but the opposite side of B. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And obviously, the opposite side of the right angle is your hypotenuse. Okay, so that's for the parts of your right triangle. Now, when you, uh, when you say the solution, or when you have the topic of the solutions of right triangles, what we usually discuss is the computations of all of the part uh, quantities in the triangle itself. So when, when I ask you to solve for the right triangle, I need you to identify the two angles, okay, A and B, and the three sides. Obviously, angle C is always, or there's always one 90 degree angle, so you're left with five unknowns that must be solved. A triangle is said to be complete or solved when all of these unknowns are already available, okay? Now, in solving for right triangles, we usually use two principles. You have your Pythagorean theorem and you have your trigonometric functions that will now help you to solve for any quantity in the right triangle. Okay? So, first one, the Pythagorean theorem. So, the Pythagorean theorem, also known as the Pythagoras theorem, is a fundamental relation in Euclidean geometry. It defines the relationship among three sides of a right triangle. Take note of the right triangle. This means this formula is only available or is only applicable to right triangles. If the triangle is not a right triangle, this formula cannot be used. I repeat, you cannot use this formula for non-right triangles. Okay? It states that the square of the hypotenuse, square of the hypotenuse, so let's say here in our triangle, where is the hypotenuse? That is side C, correct? Square of that, so C squared, right? the side opposite the right angle is equal to is equal to equal sign the sum so add the two of the squares of the other two sides so what are the other two sides you have your a and you have your b the square of those two sides the sum of those two sides okay so take the squares a squared plus b squared this is now your pythagorean equation okay if you want to solve for the value of c simply take the square root of both sides you get c is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? So this formula is very powerful because it allows you to solve for a missing side or a missing length of the triangle given at least two of the sides or length available, okay? If you want to solve for a, you simply transpose b squared. This becomes c squared minus b squared or b that becomes c squared minus a squared, okay? So this is a very famous formula. I'm sure you've uh, already encountered this one way or another. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Where do we use the Pythagorean theorem? When we have two sides available and then we're looking for the other side, okay? So to use this formula, first, you must have a right triangle and second, you must have at least two given sides, either two legs or one leg hypotenuse as long as there are two in this formula, okay? That's the Pythagorean 
theorem. Now, trigonometric functions. So this is another uh, principle or theorem that we're going to use for us to solve okay, uh, the uh, triangle, the right triangle. So a right triangle has six principal parts, three sides denoted as ABC, again, right? And there are three corresponding angles. So uh, denoted by, let's say, angle A, or simply remove the angle sign, just A, okay, it's up to you, B and C. The angle C is usually given 90 degrees, right, usually. And the other two angles, angle A and angle B, as acute angles, so less than 90 degrees. Trigonometric functions are named such as sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, second, and cosecant of an acute angle. The definitions of these six functions are merely based on the possible ratios uh, formed out of the three sides of a triangle. Certainly, there are six functions because of the six ratios of the sides. It is meaningful to state the definitions of the six functions in terms of an acute angle. So, angle A or angle B. So if angle A is considered an acute angle of ABC, then we shall call. So on the next slide, we'll define now the three definitions of this, or the six definitions of these trigonometric functions. But for now, so notice our label here, okay? So we've summarized what we've said a while ago, wherein A is the side opposite to A but adjacent to B, side A, okay? Side B is the side opposite to B, side adjacent to A. Trigonometric functions deals with angles, meaning you're going to take the six trigonometric functions of either angle A or angle B. Therefore, they are not necessarily equal to each other. So you'll see later on. Okay, so if the trigonometric functions are abbreviated, then the definitions are as follows. Okay, so again, we're taking the trigonometric functions of angle A. So we're looking at angle A first. Okay, so here are the definitions of your trigonometric functions. Sine A. The sine function of an angle is the length of the side opposite to the angle, in this case angle A, to the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so side opposite to A, and then hypotenuse over the hypotenuse. So take note these are ratios, okay, so therefore there are fractions. Cosine A, cosine function, is the length of the side adjacent to A, and the length of the hypotenuse. Tangent A is the length of the side opposite to A, over the length of the side adjacent to A. A. These three, okay, cosecant and second cotangent, are now the reciprocals of this first or initial function. So if you know these three functions, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, therefore you know already the cosecant, the second, and the cotangent functions. So when you say the reciprocal, they are just the inverse, or meaning you're just going to interchange the position of the denominator and the numerator. So for the cosecant function, it's the inverse of the sine function, so it's now the length of the hypotenuse over now the side opposite to A. Second is the length of the hypotenuse over the length of the side adjacent to A. And cotangent is the length of the side adjacent to A over the length of the side opposite to A. Okay? Okay, for the given triangle considering angle A, the six trigonometric functions are defined as follows. So if we simplify, okay, so the definitions of the functions, here they are. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, cosecant, hypotenuse over opposite, second, hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent adjacent over opposite. So for this particular triangle and for particular angle A, okay, if we take the functions here, we get sine A is opposite over adjacent, Opposite of angle A is side A, adjacent, uh, I mean op opposite over hypotenuse, hypotenuse is C, okay? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so B over C, adjacent side, okay? And tangent is opposite over adjacent, so A over B. So this three, the reciprocal, simply, okay? So take the reciprocal of the three primary functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? So that's how you get now your functions. Now, a common mnemonic for remembering the relationships between the sine, cosine, and tangent functions is the SOKATOA. So the SOKATOA is formed from the first letters of sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine, opposite over hypotenuse, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, or the Pythagorean formula, and the SOKATOA, okay, or the trigonometric functions to solve now, trigonometric 
uh, to solve now right triangles. Now, for the trigonometric functions, if you're going to use this to solve for right triangles, you need at least one side and one angle given. Okay, so again, you need at least one side and one angle given. So in Pythagorean formula, you need at least two sides here on the angle or in the trigonometric functions. For you to use them, you need at least a one side and one given angle. Okay, again, this formula is restricted to right triangles. Okay, so you cannot use this formula later on, the Sokotoa functions or the trigonometric functions. You cannot use these relationships, opposite over adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse, to other types of triangles. So there are other formulas that are fit for those triangles. So these are again only for right triangles. So, okay, so with that I think we're ready now to solve for problems for right triangles. Okay, so here we are asked now to solve the right triangle ABC with angle A equal to 36 degrees 50 minutes and side C equal to 92.7 centimeters. Okay, so when you say solve the right triangle, you're asking now for the remaining unknown quantities, namely the angles or and or the sides. Okay, so here we have now angle A, we have side C, so we are missing what? Side A, side B, and angle B. We already know what angle C is, correct? Angle C, since this is a right triangle, is a right angle, so C is already a 90 degree angle. Okay, so we're solving now for at least or for only three quantities okay so here are our uh formulas so here are our functions and here are our uh pythagorean theorem okay so we're going to use this now here in our solution okay now solution since the hypotenuse c that is 92.7 centimeters and angle a are given we can use the sine function to find a so sine function Okay, so take note, I told you when you're going to use now the trigonometric function, you need at least a side and an angle given. Okay, so here are our unknowns. Okay, let's go to side A. How can we use side A? Okay, can we use the Pythagorean theorem? Not yet. Why? Because we only have one given side. The Pythagorean theorem requires at least two sides for it to work. Okay, so we're stuck now or we're now going to choose between our uh, trigonometric functions. And if you look at side A, and if you look at our given, correct, which formula fits the description? Now, we have A, okay, so, uh, angle A, we're looking for side A, and then we also have side C. So I think sine A is the perfect formula to use to solve for A, okay? Because for cosine, it's not containing A, right? And for tangent, it's not containing C. So this formula, sine A, contains our given and our unknown. It contains angle A and side C, the given, and our unknown, side A. Okay, so we're going to use now sine function. So if you use sine A is equal to A over C, we take sine 36 degrees, 50 minutes, is equal to A over 92.7. Okay, so the opposite side, correct, of angle A is A, and, and it's hypotenuse, so so katoa, so uh, all opposite over hypotenuse is the 92.7. So this is your relationship. You only have one unknown here, which is A. Cross multiply 92.72, sine 36 degrees 50, you get this particular expression. Input this in your calculator. So where do you input this in your calculator? So for example, this degree and 50 is available in your calculator. Okay. So if you have a scientific calculator, the uh, let's say 991ES calculator, this is the uh, somewhere close to the right side. So second to the right, and then... Uh, near the uh, negative sign so this is the sign so degrees uh, minutes and seconds so just put here before you type the number degrees and then minutes okay so cross multiply this is what you're going to get in your input so we in thirds out that angle our side a is 55.57 centimeter okay so we now have side c a uh, side a okay now we already have side c correct 92.7 we already have side a which is 55.57 so a while ago i told you that the pythagorean theorem requires only two sides to work correct our next unknown is angle uh, side b right and side b here correct can be solved using the pythagorean theorem it is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared we have c we computed a so we can technically solve for b however so there i left a note here 
Uh, to find the values of the other parts of the triangle, let us use the information given in the problem rather than the calculated value of A. Okay, so this one. In solving a problem, it is usually best to use, whenever possible, given data rather, rather than calculated results to find the other unknowns in the problem. Because if mistakes were incurred in previous computations, the succeeding computations using calculated results would surely be incorrect. Okay, so we can use B, uh, we can use side A and side C and the Pythagorean theorem to solve for side B. However, since A is a computed value, it is not given by the problem. We computed the, we compute this ourselves, correct? We computed this ourselves. If A was wrong and you use this value, the wrong value to solve for B, then sure enough, B will also be wrong. So what this is saying is that as much as possible, use what is given to solve for the unknowns independent of each other. Okay? So later on, maybe we can use again the Pythagorean theorem just to check the value of B if it's correct. Okay? So for now, let's not use A first to solve for the value of B. Instead, let us again find okay, a particular function wherein we can now uh, solve for B using angle A and hypotenuse C. And that function turns out is okay, cosine. Okay, so the formula for cosine A is equal to B over C, right? So cosine 36 degrees 50 is equal to B over 92.7. Okay, so here is cosine. Again, why did we use cosine? Because if you look at the formula for cosine, it contains our given, that is A and angle A and side C, and our unknown B. So it's the one that we need to use. So this is the equation. Cross multiply again. B, input this in your calculator. You'll get B as 74.20 centimeter okay so we have now already a and b so the only remaining value now is angle b okay uh, take note here the value of b can also be found using the pythagorean theorem however this theorem could be simply used as a check for the computed value so kindly check it yourself use now this particular formula b is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared to solve for b and you should get almost the same answer or should be the same answer as 74.20 but again we do not suggest that because if a was wrong b would have been wrong okay so here for the angles so we're not going to use either the pythagorean theorem or the trigonometric functions because remember okay since a uh, triangle abc is a right triangle c is 90 degrees correct Remember for triangles, what did we say a while ago? The sum of all of the angles, the measure of the angles, is now already 180 degrees. It's always 180 degrees, correct? If C is already 90 degrees, therefore A and B must share what measure of an angle? That is, they must share 90 degrees, correct? So this is already 90, so if you add A and B, it must also be 90 to make 180, as to not break the rule of the triangle. So for a triangle, the sum of the angles is always 180. So meaning, if you add A and B, they should only be equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, these two angles are now complementary. Well, we do have already the angle of A. So simply subtracting A from 90 degrees, we get the angle B, which is 50 degrees and 10 minutes, or if you put it in decimal only, 53.167 degrees. Okay, And just like that, we already now solve all of the unknowns of the triangle. Okay, so here they are. Uh, here they are. Okay, so we did not use yet the Pythagorean theorem because we're trying to avoid using computed values or calculated values as much as possible to minimize our error. Okay, so uh, if we go to uh, example number two, this one. So find the unknown parts of the right triangle ABC if A is equal to 27 degrees 10 minutes and B is equal to 12.3 centimeters. Okay, what are our unknown so we have what is this angle a and we had side b therefore we're missing side c side a and angle b so a c side a and c and angle b okay uh, i think we can find easily what angle b correct so again as i've mentioned a while ago a and b are complementary angles because we already know that c is 90 degrees if the three angles make 180 degrees, so minus 90 already, these two, if you add them together, should be 90 degrees. So B is equal just to 90 minus angle A, therefore B is 53 degrees, 10 minutes. Okay? Okay. Next, how about side A? Okay, side A, this one. What are the given? Angle A, 
side A is the opposite of angle A, we are, we are also given the adjacent side of angle A. So we have, we're looking for an opposite, we have the angle and we have the adjacent. So of the three functions here, I think we're going to use tangent okay, function because the tangent A, is its opposite is A, side A, unknown side over adjacent side which is 12.3 centimeter. Okay, so we're going to use the tangent function. It contains of all of our quantities. It has our two givens and it has our unknown. Okay, so we're going to use that. Here it is. So input the values. So tangent of 27 degrees 10 minutes is equal to A over 12.3 cross multiply. Input this in your calculator. You should get A equal to 6.31 centimeter. Okay, and last one for C. Okay, using again angle A and side B, angle A, 27 degrees, we have its adjacent and C is its hypotenuse. So, angle, adjacent, hypotenuse. Where do we see that? We see that on cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, we're going to use cosine A, correct? So, this becomes cosine A, 27 degrees, 10 minutes equal to 12.3, okay, adjacent side of this angle over its hypotenuse. So manipulate the equation. C can be solved using 12.3 over cosine 27 degrees 10 minutes. C will now be 13.82 centimeter. So this triangle is already solved, but let's just try to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for C and confirm the answer. Okay. So, but then again, I'm warning you not to use this as much as possible because we are going to use the value of side A. Side A is a computed value or a calculated value. If you get this wrong and you use this value to solve for C, you'll also get C wrong. Okay. So anyways, just for checking of this answer, okay, we take the square root of 6.31, that is A, correct, squared, plus 12.3, that is B squared. So you see that the answers are the same. It's good for checking. At least you can check your answer for the triangle. Okay. So those are the methods, the trigonometric functions. And now the uh, Pythagorean theorem, those are the methods that you can use to solve for all of the missing parts, which are the either sides or angles of a right triangle. So again, these methods are only for right triangles. When we go to other types of triangles, we'll introduce different formulas. Okay. So if you have any questions, you kindly send them in our uh, inbox in Canvas. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.